Hey guys, welcome to part three of Jesus in Politics. i uh, really excited to jump into Isaiah chapter 60 today. Isaiah chapter 60, um, after this is over, read the whole chapter. It's fantastic, but we're just going to look at the first three verses. And they say, Arise, shine, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. So, so here's the key twist in these three verses. I have historically looked at this as God is shining on me. And because God is so awesome and bright, I need to go tell others about him. I need to, the word would be reflect, reflect him to others. But he's not saying that. He is saying, arise, shine, not arise, reflect. And that's something I got uh, listening to a, uh, a sermon on YouTube by Bill Johnson, and, and he pointed that out. And in fact, this whole chapter was a big tipping point just in his personal walk with God and in his ministry back in 1979. He says that he was just led to this chapter and reading this chapter as he prayed um, while kind of just pacing back and forth in his church, you know, just probably during the week, during a time when there was nobody else in there. And God led him to this chapter that he'd read many times before, but at that moment, at that time, there was just an aha moment, right, that we've all had where God goes, Bill, it's not arise, reflect, it's arise, shine. And then in verse three, as I read, it says, all nations, God says to you, to them, to the people of Israel at the time, says to you now, says to me, all nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Here's the deal. When, when we, go, we move from people who were not children of God to people who are children of God, from being orphans to being adopted, right? From, from being dead to being alive, from having no life to having new life, right? When we're adopted into the kingdom, the Holy Spirit fills us. If we're walking right with God, the Holy Spirit's radiance just covers us. And it's not that we're reflecting. We don't become God. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't become God. But we're so full of light. We've, become, we've been given such new life, right? We're walking in the righteousness of Christ, Right? We've been fully adopted. Okay, We are now heirs with Christ that we do have light that we put off. And he says, all nations will come to your light and mighty kings will come to see your radiance. And why does this even matter? Because I was standing in line at the airport yesterday. And I was on, and then after that, I was on the, the little train or whatever it is that gets you from one gate to the next gate. And as I was doing it, I just looked around at the, at the people and I went face by face by face. And I said, just in my spirit, and I said in prayer, I said, God, they, they might believe they're standing in light because in the natural, there were lights on in the building and in the train. But I said, in the supernatural, many of these are living in darkness and yet I carry your light. I'm like the Ark of the Covenant. You, The Bible says you're a temple, right? Your body is the temple of God. You're like the Ark of the Covenant that the Israelites carry the presence of, of God in, right? And remember the Ark of the Covenant where David and the Israelites didn't want it in Jerusalem because they had carried it the wrong way and one of the priests put his hand on it and he died and a bunch of people died and all this stuff. So I, where did they, who, whose house did they put it in? Was it, was it Obed-Edom? It was somebody's house, right? They put it, they put this Ark in. And the house and the surrounding area was so blessed that David heard about it and went and got the ark and they carried it the right way and they got it back and David was so excited. The point is, this presence of God that lives in us, you know, and now that we're heirs with Christ, right? We reign with him, right? We're a royal priesthood, right? Royal priest, right? We, we, we shine this light. We don't reflect this light. We are this light, right? Because of him, he is God, right? And it, and it can go out and it can touch and it can change lives even without talking to people, even without verbally out loud praying for people to be healed, even without talking to people, even without doing something. Now, do we want those things to be done? Yes. If so, you see somebody in a wheelchair, go ask if you can pray for them. 
right? If you're in a conversation with someone they don't know Jesus Christ, tell them the plan of salvation, of course. But I am saying, as you move through an area, if you move anywhere, you are this light. It says, your light, your radiance, shine. And so shine consciously, shine intentionally into the darkness of the supernatural world around you, wherever you go, and whatever you're doing. How does that relate to Jesus and politics? Wow, we've really got to pull this back, right? How does this relate to Jesus? You know it absolutely relates. Because and we're filming this video in January 2016, as I always say. So we're going into this you know, political year. And I am saying, you might post things on Facebook, you might have conversations or just in your mind, whatever, you might have these conversations in your mind, these thoughts related to politics and policies and things that you get upset about or people that you really are for and people you're really against and all this stuff. And, but you still might say, but I don't reflect any darkness. You know, I mean, if I reflect something, it's going to be light. I mean, it's going to be good if anybody actually hears about it. I'm saying you're either being darkness or you're being light. You know, you're either being darkness or you're being light. And that's what you are giving off in the supernatural world. Okay. And that includes in your conversations about politics, your thought about politics, uh, your thoughts about politics, your conversations just with your small peer group about politics or anything you post on Facebook, right? You are either being darkness or you're being light to the greater world. And let me tell you, it, it doesn't really, you don't get any points for being light to people who already have light. I mean, do encourage others, of course, but I'm saying, what has God really called us to? He's called us to be light in a dark world. So if you are countering the darkness by being darkness, if you're countering the darkness with arguing and, and hate and and um, just this opposition, right? And just, just I'm going to fight back. Then what light have you brought into the darkness? None at all. You've only met darkness with darkness. Let's meet the darkness with light, with who we are. Let's shine. And we can shine in the words we say, in the prayers we pray, in the things that we do. But we can also out loud, I mean the prayers we out loud, but we can also shine just by being who we are. And we walk in this place and in our minds and our spirits, without even opening our mouths, we say, God, just seeds of light into that darkness, seeds of light in that person's life, seeds of light into that situation or whatever it might be, seeds of light. And those seeds will grow over time. And what you've done in the supernatural by carrying that light into it will have impact for eternity. All right, look forward to talking to you in part five. Bye.